church, just oh. in case you're trying to figure it out. <laughs> I was looking at the... This right here? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, and uh, it's good to have you. And um, we are going to have a <laughs> tree today. <laughs> I will not be standing here this morning ministering. And of course, you're wondering who it will be. Sister Alicia? Could it be? Veronica? One day. Get ready, get ready. Pastor Wayne, we're going to call Pastor Wayne to the podium. Let's have him come up and minister and share what the Lord has put on his heart. But we just thank God for the opportunity to be in his house and um, to be able to worship and praise and adore him. Amen. Anybody Amen. glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. All right. Anybody is here that's going to help Pastor Wayne minister? You're going to... You're going to say, yes, keep going. Doing a good job. Anybody here is going to be doing that? Yes? All right. Good. So, um, stretch your hands this way, please. Do you want to pray for yourself? Or yes. No. <laughs> Lord, thank you so much for this willing vessel. Thank you, Lord God, for the word that you've placed inside of him. You have deposited it in him. We don't know who this word is for, but Lord God, usually we are first partakers of the word that we deliver. So let your word minister to him as he ministers back to us. And Lord God, let your word go forth, Lord Jesus, with anointing and power, Lord Jesus Christ, to, to do what you have sent it to do, so that it will not return to you void. And Lord God, we will not fail to give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Again, for the prayers, for the encouragement that we, that even, even we all need, right? Me Amen. and you and everyone, right? On a regular basis. Yes. So, um, yeah, so it's that time again. And uh, and so I got this word as a from a a, a, a video. We had a, another death in in, my, in our family. You know, as a matter of fact, it's my my cousin's um, husband's father in the in the in New York past recently. And um, you know we share. We have a family group on WhatsApp that we share things, birthdays, and all everything. And one of the things that we shared, my cousin, another cousin of mine shared this this um, song from um, C. C. Winans, Comforter, Comforter. And I was going to speak on something else, but when I saw that, I said, "That is a good, good sub topic to subject to to speak on." So I started doing some research on that and, and studying the word and others and and so I decided to do the this topic on the comfort. But we all need comfort, don't we? Yes, we do. With all, all with so many times that we go through tragedy and loss and issues in our lives that cause us to be kinda upheaved and anxious and upset and distressed and and, and sorrowful, and we just need to be comforted. Amen. Right? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> so this, the, the, I picked a couple of verses from the from the song from C.C. Wine as the Comforter. Um, the two main verses, one of the first one says, Faithful friend and father, I've called you through the years. You've been great physician when sickness lingered near. Through distressing moments, your, your name is new and sweet. You become a comforter to me. And the second verse says, And the grieving family who weeps for love, one's gone. The pain of separation and consume, consumes another home. But on the waves of sorrow, you, we, you walk with perfect ease. Comforter is who the whole world needs. And that's so true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may not think that we do, 
sometimes we may think that we can make it through on our own, we can manage it our, ourselves, we can get through this. But when it's all over and done with, at the end of the day, we find ourselves needed comfort. So as Christians, right, we, 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 we rely on each other to comfort, but ultimate comfort comes from our Heavenly Father, right? Yes. Our Heavenly Father. Yes, we all need comfort. Perhaps we've had some life circumstances I mentioned that cause this hurt. And we don't know where to turn, where to go, who to turn to, who to call upon. But don't fear. We can have comfort with with which comes from the Holy Spirit. He is, he is called the Comforter. And He gives peace and healing to our hurting hearts. Amen. Amen. The Comforter is, is with us in a state of weight. From the moment we believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our penalty, for our sins, yes. we can rest in the strength of the Holy Spirit we can have comfort that is unspeakable and delightful. Notice I will use the word can. And I say that to mean when we receive Christ into our hearts, right? He's there to comfort us. And He can comfort us. But we need to go the next step further. And it is, that is the Holy Spirit, because that comforter comes through the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. In John 14 and 16, it says, And I will pray, this is Jesus, said this, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So he said, another comforter. So who was the first comforter? Jesus himself, right? Amen. So when he had to go to be with the Father, he says he's going to leave us another comforter. And the comforter is the Holy Spirit. So the expression another counselor means another counselor of the same kind as the first. They signify that Jesus was the first counselor, comforter, and that the Spirit would be the same kind of Comforter. Therefore, even though Jesus is not here in the flesh at that time, or right now, the Holy Spirit is here and can be our com constant companion to guide, to help, to empower on every to, on every convert of Jesus Christ from the task ahead. But the ultimate task is that we should win souls for the the Christ, right? That's the ultimate purpose. <clears throat> as long as Jesus was here in person, the object of the disciples' faith would always be tangible. I mean, it's something you could grab hold of, something you can see, something you can feel. The external person, right? The person you can see. That is not necessarily bad. However, if it means that they would constantly depend on Him, Jesus, right there at the moment, mm -hmm. at the time, to help direct them, to answer their questions, yes. and for all the needs that they had at that time. Right. Their own thoughts and conscience, conscience would per perpetually be pushed aside. Mm -hmm. Why? in favor of asking Jesus. So instead of them relying on themselves, they would always rely on Jesus. They always see Jesus. They would not think of their, of their own feelings, their own, 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 own ideas, and all, all their, their own thoughts. They're relying on Jesus. So when he wasn't, wasn't physically there, or they weren't physically around him, they would feel incomplete. The comforter here is translated from the root term paracletus, or paraclete. 
this can also be translated in the, as the helper or the comforter or the advocate, I should say. So paracletus is the, is the, is the root word of the comforter. So that connection has meaning. Jesus was later point out that he is leaving behind his earthly ministry specifically so the Holy Spirit can act. So if he was here, he continued to be here, the Holy Spirit could not come. Could not come. In John 16 and 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you, that, tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. But if I go not away, the country will not come unto, unto you. But, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Basically saying, I can't be here and the comforter also. The, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, in a sense, does from inside what Christ would do from the outside. Right? The Holy Spirit is inside of us, right? For those that have accepted. For if I go not away, oh no, sorry, to teach and to convict, to remind us and to, and to guide. And John 14 and 7 says, Jesus clarified that his helper is the Holy Spirit who is available to all those who believe. 14 and 7. 14 and 7, 14 and 17, which is, says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, the world cannot receive, the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive, what does that mean? The world in entirety, entirely, entirety, cannot receive, right? Because of who we are, right? Sin. The sin in us. Because it, is, because it sees, because it seeth him not. The world seeth God, Jesus, not. Neither knoweth him. But ye know, but ye know him, for he dwelleth within you and shall be in you. So he's talking to the disciples, right? In the first chapter of Acts, we find the account of Jesus' ascension into heaven, leaving his disciples, his church behind. He had told them, I go to the Father and see me, you'll see me no more. And that's in John 16 and 10. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, you see me no more. So some would say, oh wow, for us, because Jesus is gone, Jesus is not with us. But it's on the contrary, we are better off. Right? Jesus himself said so. Jesus has told his disciples, it is to your advantage that I go. How can this be to our advantage, one would say. What did he mean by that? How could he be to our advantage, it be to our advantage that he leaves us? The answer is, he said, for I do not go away, but if I do not go away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him. So what this is saying is the comforter, the helper, is why it is up to our advantage that Jesus went away to send to us. When Jesus was here on earth, he was, he was a limitless source of strength, inspiration, and instruction to those who were with him and those who would accept him. He was in every sense of the word a true helper, the comforter. Amen. But he dwelt with them only a short time, those three years, right? Amen. After he stated, I go to my father, he added, however, and I will pray the father and I will, and he will give you another comforter, the helper, that he may, be, may abide with you forever. So he was with us, with them, for three years. But the comforter, the helper, the, the Holy Spirit would be with them and us forever. In John 14, 12, it says, Verily, verily I say unto you, 
He that believeth on me the work that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. You just hear that? You hear that? He said, greater works. Greater works than he did. All the works that Jesus did on earth in those three years while he was here. Can you imagine that he said, we, you, can do even greater works because the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine? Can you imagine doing greater works than Jesus did? Oh boy. In John 14 and 16 it says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So it's, the whole book of John is taught about another comforter. He's giving us another, another comforter, and that's what we need. That's what I'm talking about. We need that comforter this, in this world, especially now, with all that's going on. Right now it's the heat, right? <laughs> Here and abroad, the heat, three-digit temperatures. Yes, that's true. And a few are even passing, even dying from, from that. We need that comfort. So when we call upon Him, He can even allow a little breeze, a little fresh air, a little cool air, a little recovery from that. Constant heat. Benjamin! <laughs> so, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for sending your comforter. John 14, 26 says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Spirit is going to teach us, they started with the disciples, all things, all everything that they needed to be taught, they needed to understand, the Holy Spirit will, will teach them. And would also bring to their remembrance all that Jesus taught them, which is very, very important. Because that's what they use. That's how the first church started, right? From the teaching of Jesus Christ. So the comfort was going to bring to their remembrance everything that God, Jesus taught them. It is the, it is the method of God that has chosen, the method of God has chosen by which he is also able to be in one place and exercise his power, influence, and omniscience everywhere, anywhere else, no matter what the distance from him. So imagine, when Jesus was here, he could, he could help, he could heal, he could minister where he was. So those that weren't, that weren't there with him could receive the healing, could receive the, the ministry. But the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came, that Holy Spirit was able to minister, heal, everywhere. Whoever accepted Him, whoever has that, those gifts, it was not limited to just that one place, that one location. It was unlimited through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, from every person that received them, all over, everywhere. So that allowed His Spirit his gifts to be limitless. Amen. A perfect example of that comfort of the Holy Spirit is with Stephen. In the early days of Christianity, there lived a man named Stephen. I'm sure you've heard. Who was a devout believer and follower of Jesus Christ. Known for his wisdom and courage, Stephen was chosen as one of the first seven deacons of the early Christian church. However, his dedication to Christ made him a target for persecution. <clears throat> Stephen found himself standing before the Sanhedrin, a group of religious leaders facing accusations of blasphemy 
As he spoke passionately about Jesus, some members of the council grew angry and plotted to have him killed. As he was being led to his death by stoning, Stephen gazed up to the heavens and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God, giving him strength and comfort to face his martyrdom. Imagine being led down that street to be killed, to be stoned. And as you're being stoned, you're not there as you normally, a normal person would be, trying to fight off, trying to uh, 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 fight off, or trying to move, move from the from the onslaught of the of the, of the, of the stones and trying to manage the, the, the beating and the hurt and the persecution. But he looked up to heaven and saw Jesus and saw the Comforter and found comfort even after all that he was going through, the persecution, the beating, he found comfort. And he had the Holy Spirit in him, so he was able to receive that comfort that came from Christ. So I bring that this word to you this morning to let us let, remind you. It's not something you don't know, don't already know, but just to remind you, to encourage you that when we are going through these difficult times in our lives, in our personal yes. lives, difficult times with our family, loss of loved ones, to be, to be reminded yes. of the comfort that comes, the comfort that is there for us, the comfort that was left here for us when Jesus went on. That's right. Amen. The comfort that surpassed all understanding. Yes. The comfort that we could not imagine Amen. is there for every one of us to receive. So I leave you with that. My short and concise word on comfort for each and every one of you. Miss Sandra, Pastor Sandra. <laughs> okay. So, was that short or was that short? Short and to the point. <laughs> okay, so since it was short, all right. So how many people um, got something from what passed away and ministered on? What about your legs? Are you going to go up to? <laughs> You know, when, when he told me what he was going to minister on, and, you know, he was thinking, well, I don't know, this is what I got. I'm thinking, you know what? The Lord knows exactly who needs this word, whether it's somebody here or somebody who's going to be watching later. Because sometimes when we go through some stuff, we, we want to be strong. We crush our teeth. as like, how you doing? I'm all right. But are we really okay? Not really. We're breaking down on the inside, aren't we? We're hurting. We want our mother's arms and our mother's laps, and we want some hugs, and we want some her, her to, and what fathers do, to dry our tears. And my mom used to, when, when we would fall down and lose our knees or whatever, she would say, come, let me kiss it for you. And once she kissed that thing, my goodness, even before a Band-Aid was put on with any kind of medicine, guess what? It started to feel better. Was it in my mind? <laughs> I could have been. But just that, that action of wanting to comfort me, I was comforted, Sister Veronica. Oh my God. And I was looking up the Paracletus and, and the Holy Spirit, and they said in the Hebrew, it's different from English, because in English we have the masculine, the feminine, and the neuter, right? He, she, or it. In the Hebrew, it's just masculine and feminine. And do you know the word comforter, the Holy Spirit, actually is feminine? But you don't say she, you say he, as you can see from the scriptures. But why she? Why the feminine? Because mothers on a whole tend to be nurturers, right? We want to hug and kiss and all that stuff. Some fathers do, yes. We, we, we're not going to leave out the fathers, right? But it is just the nature of a woman to do that, to comfort. And God wants to comfort whoever wants comfort this morning. If you are here, or if you're listening later, and you need comfort, but you've been told, 
Yeah, just keep it inside. People don't really want to hear you talking. They don't want to hear the complaints. Just keep it inside. You can keep it inside, but know that you can go to Jesus Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and say, please, God, hold me right now. Please, could you just hold me? Could you just embrace me? I need, I'm hurting. I'm hurting on the inside. I might not show it. People come up to me and I smile. I smile sweetly, because I don't really want them to know that inside I'm breaking down. Inside I'm falling to pieces. I don't want them to really know. I don't want to bother them, and they don't want to hear, Lord. Know that you can go to Jesus Christ if you don't have a friend that you can talk to and that friend can give you comfort, that co-worker, that teacher, whoever it is. Know that the Holy Spirit is a comforter whom Jesus said, I will send him to you because I'm leaving, but I'm sending him to you. Don't break down and just keep breaking down. Go to him. Tell him that you want him to hold you, to hold you to embrace you. Just know that he can and he will if you let him. Amen? Amen? So, you know, just, I don't know if anybody's here this morning and you're just breaking down. Just close your eyes, open up your spirit, and just yield to the comfort of this morning and just let him comfort you. That's his job. That's what he was sent to do. He so desires to do, but so many people are running from that. Just let him comfort you, and you'll feel that oil and the wine going in, like what happened with that man on the road to Jerusalem that was um, was wounded, and he was left on the roadside. And the good Samaritan came, and he saw his wounds, and he put all that stuff on him, and then he took him to the inn. You remember the story very well, but he poured in the oil and the wine, and that man of the Spirit, let the Holy Spirit pour in his oil and his wine and just comfort you today and heal the wounds that are private, private wounds, but they're still wounds. People don't see them. Let the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, comfort and heal those wounds in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, God. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Come.